Hello, and my name is Pete Rushmer, and I'm your host today of A Half Dozen Things podcast. A Half Dozen Things is a podcast for business owners just like you. Whether you're an underdog hungry for success, or you're already smashing it, but want to continue to level up, We are here each week for you to get insight and learning from the very best in the business. No fluff, no BS, and no self-proclaimed gurus talking about how easy business or life is. Welcome everybody to the Half a Dozen Things podcast. Now you might, your regular listeners might have uh, picked up the fact that this doesn't sound like Pete. This is Mike on the mic. Oh, that's it. Where do I get them from? Mike on the mic. <laughs> so this is Mike on the mic this afternoon. You're going to uh, want me back by the time uh, this is done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> DJing was never my, my, my big thing. Um, so you might be wondering, uh, dear listener, zuz, listeners, uh, why, uh, why each, it's... Each one of each them one, both. I appeal to you personally. <laughs> Personally, why it's Mike on the mic this afternoon. So um, the reason why it's, uh, it's Mike on the mic is we had a bit of a milestone recently. Uh, it's been two years. That t- that this is the second anniversary of the Half a Dozen Things podcast. And uh, I thought that deserved to be marked uh, with a special occasion. And the special occasion is that my guest, my guest on Half a Dozen Things podcast, is the podcast creator and I must say that the man who makes a much better job of it than I do, <laughs> host I'm not Pete sure Rushmer. So, Pete, uh, <laughs> welcome to your own podcast. What does it feel like to be on the other side of the uh, of the, of the uh, desk, as it were? I'll be honest, Matt. I've like put it off all day, and uh, yeah, I've just sort of taken phone calls and tried to put it back. And I actually feel a little bit anxious to be honest. Ah, mate. So, so you should. I kind so of, I kind of, uh, very much in the shoes of yeah. uh, of my guests. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I know I should be a little bit more empathetic with them, but yeah, no, I'm feeling. Feeling the pressure, mate. To be you, fair, you know and you're doing what... a fantastic job. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'll get. They're not going to want me back. Mate. Not going to want you back. No, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I think I know what uh, Richard Nixon felt like uh, when. Uh, yeah, we was been interviewed by David Frost. There, not quite in that category or league, are we? But um, so that's the the whole point of this was was to bring you in as a guest um, because I was I was intrigued as I'm sure many of the of the listeners will be intrigued um, as to you know what is half a dozen things all about so I thought we'd get uh, we'd get yourself on your own podcast to to answer those questions so um, as is customary with half a dozen things for those who don't know the format uh, and if not why not you should do get onto the back catalogue some great stuff on there some I think it's fair to say Pete you've had some fantastic guests on um, over the over the the last two years Uh, and that that guest list is growing uh, by the week Um, so um, it's a normal format for those guests and is to be given half a dozen things, hence the name of the uh, the podcast, uh, to talk to us about. So you've prepared half a dozen things for me today, uh, for me to ask you. So I guess the, the first question uh, and the important question is when we talk about half a dozen things, half a dozen things um, and flagship partners goes really hand in hand. Um, it's a part of what you do. Here. It's a part of the uh, of, of what you've created um, at Flagship. So I suppose the first question on both counts really with Flagship and the half a dozen things is is, is why? Mm, mm, yeah, so um, it, why, is a great, why is always a great place to start? Um, start with why, literally as Simon Sinek would say. Um, but why, why, is a, why is a great question? And it's something that has toyed uh, in my head for a long time because I've, I've not really known the answer. Hmm. Um, from a why for flagship point of view there, there's varying answers the, the one for half dozen things is really straightforward so I'll start with the reason why for half dozen things I always wanted to have a podcast from the first time that I started listening to them I was introduced to them by a previous guest Rob Moore uh, who runs a podcast called the, the Disruptive Entrepreneur and he really sort of lit in me the belief uh, through his podcast The Disruptive Entrepreneur that I had an entrepreneurial spirit and uh uh, I listen to the podcast, I've listened to various books and bits and pieces, and I've always wanted to create content and uh, give people uh, valuable information to listen to because I guess that's hardwired in me that I, I like to help people. So the podcast is really straightforward. It's uh, I, I When I first put it out there, uh, I got some criticism from people um, because I'd, uh, I'd not 
thought about making it niche and who necessarily the listener would be or that I'd made it too broad. And over time, I have narrowed narrowed down the, 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 the type of content that we create. However, a half dozen things, I never really set it with a financial objective to achieve. Mm. I, knew, I knew by creating content, then I would raise potentially my personal brand but really it's always been a labor of love I've always wanted the podcast to be there because I've enjoyed the journey I love learning from people so I've always had guests who I've loved to want to interview because I knew that I'd learn something from them so it's kind of hopefully the people who are still listening from the beginning have kind of been on that learning journey with me and that's my gift to them as well um, so it's, it's a bit of a legacy thing from a business point of view I think I realised that I was shit at taking orders. <laughs> um, so that that made me pretty... I'll be honest, sort of, in all of the jobs that I'd had in the past, I'd, I'd been... I'd, I'd, I'd not really understood why, but I'd never really been satisfied. And I, I thought that I wouldn't be able to be satisfied. But I, what I've realised over the past four years since I registered the business and three, three years, certainly, since I, I left employment, I... I, I realised that I, I, I work at a pace um, and I had, interestingly actually, there's a story for you. When I was at Volvo, when I was at Volvo, I was asked to do something called a 360 review, a 360 oh, feedback. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it was whilst I was a business development manager and um, I remember, I remember <laughs> a couple of bits of feedback. One I think had come from a senior peer and essentially what a 360 feedback review is, the people who are your peers on the, on the same sort of uh, level of feeding as you are and then um, what you would class as people who reported to you uh, or in other disciplines would then would then do a review on you and then your senior people would do a review on you too and uh, the feedback I got certainly from uh, a peer was Pete needs to slow down <laughs> uh, because he makes the rest of us look bad uh, there I is an was, element of that in there yeah, yeah. Um, so something has been driving me so when we think about why something has been driving me but I've never really sort of known what it was I I realised that last year so I invested in quite a bit of you, you, people have heard me talk about NLP Neuro Linguistic yeah. Programming and I invested a fair amount of money and time with, uh, with an NLP coach over the past 12 months and it's made a huge huge impact to to my life um, and to my outlook on things because I had a few questions and one of them was I didn't really know what dro what drove me um, and the other was was that if I'm going to work this hard to try and get somewhere I best land in a place that I fucking want to be you want to be there yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what if you worked hard and yeah well I don't really want to be here what's you know, this all about and, and I think I think what I started out with and I'm not ashamed to admit it. When I started out, I wanted to be a happy, sexy millionaire. And Steve Bartlett, but Steve Bartlett's book actually made me really reflect on on what my goals and my vision were. So, Happy, Sexy Millionaire is a fantastic book by Steve Bartlett. Many people will know him now as the newest dragon. Um, and uh, he talks a lot about what he thought would happen. And and certainly the same was, was the same for me that I thought that once I become a millionaire I'd be happy and I'm not a millionaire by the way <laughs> uh, let me just reiterate that but I thought I thought that when I became rich and wealthy and successful that's what success was that driving a Lamborghini meant everything and having an expensive designer suit meant everything and and that is that is I was that shallow to believe that that's what that was yeah. and as time progressed, I've realised more and more that that isn't what that is, and actually I'm not driven by those things. And last year, I was starting to achieve a level in the business where I could have probably stopped growing the business, and we we could have just had we could have had a nice life if that mm. makes sense, and we could have just cut cut the cost, focused on profit, and we would have probably brought in what I would have bought in from a from a well-paying job. Yeah. 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 No, it makes um, sense. Yeah. And that, that was, but I had no interest in doing that. So why was that? And if I'm not driven by money, what, what is that? What is my why? So, um, I, I knew, 
so one of the stories that I wanted to tell, just to sort of let let people know, really, and and by no stretch of the imagination, I I, I drive a Kia. You know, I'm not I'm not it's electric. Out there. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. <laughs> See, I'm, I do. I drive an electric Kia. There's there's really um you know I'm not I'm not a wealthy man. I've got you know I I owe eighty percent still on 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 my house and um you know but I've got to a point where. I live the way I would do if I had a decent job, like yeah. when I was in corporate land. And um, I think I think one of the things was that what NLP teaches you to do is it teaches you to realise that motivators either push you away from something, so you're either running away from something or you're running towards something good. Mm. And what I realised last year was that a lot of my motivators were pushing me away from something bad. And rather than... And I'd got to a point where actually... I'd run so far away from all the things that were bad. I didn't know what was pulling me to the things that were good. Mm. Um, and, and I found that from interviewing really successful people, I realized that a lot of people, a lot of people are motivated by things that they don't want anymore. They maybe had a, a really challenging upbringing. They've maybe had um, a really, um, a really challenging time for whatever reason. And I think I realized that everyone sort of got their challenges. Everyone, everyone has, has those, but, I think I, I had I had particular challenges. I think that I I felt I had when I, I sort of find it quite hard to talk about. I suppose so um, when Maggie and I uh, first started out together, and the the children were really young, we had children sort of fairly fairly quickly, and um, you know by any stretch of the imagination, we we were really poor and. Um, we really struggled because the bills each month were more than what was coming in. And I'd drive to work each day as a workshop controller in a body shop. And I, um, yeah, I, I guess like, I, I thought that they'd be better off without me. Um, I, I, felt, I felt worthless, um, but at the same time, I had like this expectation that I knew that I could do and be more. So that was kind of when it when it was really challenging. That's what kept me going because mm. I knew I knew that I was smart and I knew I knew that I had skills and that I learned quickly and that I could work hard. And I was not willing to get my hand. I was very willing to get my hands dirty and I'd do whatever it takes. So I knew I was really driven, but. You couldn't was, put your finger on what? No, yeah, no, yeah. I, I, was, I, was, I, was running, I was running away from stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. The story of sort of how how bad it got. I put, I put Aldi in the notes. So <laughs> yeah, to give to give people give people an idea, we had three. Our, our three children are very close together. So um, and and Lolly, the eldest, has got cerebral palsy hemiplegia, and we. Um, I remember one day. Not long after Aldi opened in Peterborough mm. at Stanground, we we thought we could save some money by trying out shopping there. People told us it was really cheap in comparison to Tesco, and um, we uh, we went to Aldi mm. and um, we did a, a week shop, which was I'll tell I'll tell you later about Maggie and how good she is at saving money. But um, we did we did a week shop. We fill, filled a trolley with clothes and we'd, uh, with clothes with food and. Um, We'd, uh, we'd taken the kids round with us and they were young at that time. So we had a double stroller and one of them, uh, one of them was sat in the trolley and we'd sort of taken them around. It was a fairly stressful affair, about an hour or so walking around the aisles at Aldi. We queued up, we um, went through the checkout and anyone that has shopped at Aldi will know what an experience oh, that is. stressful in itself, <laughs> um, isn't yeah. it? That? Yeah, so we've had me. all the stuff thrown at us and we'd sort of put it all in the uh, trolley, in the bags and... Um, it came to pay and um, the lady said, oh, you know, do you want to pay cash or card? And I said, oh, a pound card. And I got my, got my credit card out and I went to pay. And, and some people p may not know this, but in the original days, Aldi wouldn't take credit card. Oh, right. OK. Yeah, yeah. They, no, I didn't realise that. They wouldn't yeah. accept credit card. They'd only, like take, they'd they'd only, only take, take a debit payment card, card. Yeah. Debit card or cash. And yeah, that was the yeah. rationale was that because they saved on banking fees and yes, stuff like that, yeah. uh, that was one of the reasons for the pricing. Now, I'm not sure many people will remember that. No. They, they do, however, take credit card now. Um, so we had to leave the shopping. Wow! Yeah, because we didn't we didn't have the money That's, in the bank to do that, and that was. I think a lot of people can relate to that. That was That's, that was a really yeah. that was a really really big big thing for me, and you know I, I can remember Mags and I coming back with. Mags has always been big on taking the kids away and doing experiences with them and stuff, but I I remember sort of coming home. To our to a house and there, 
we'd, we'd sort of been away take, taking the kids away and we'd come back mm. and there was, there was just no food and we weren't getting paid till the next day and sort of just trying to work out how we were going to feed the kids. So, you know, I, I've kind of, anyone that, that resonates with, I've, I've been there and I, I kind of know that feeling of like, I'm working really, really hard you know you're smart, you know you're driven, but yeah. what have you got to show for it? Yeah, yeah. and we're yeah. essentially this like working poor where like there's got to be a better way really. And I'm not I'm not knocking, you know, I'm not knocking anyone that, that that's employed because there is there, there there is something for for that, but it, I just felt like it, it just didn't ever feel right. I never felt settled. I just never felt settled No, I don't understand anyone. that. I do. Yeah, um, yeah. And um, you know, I'd had it's a strange sort of mix really because I'd grown up being told that I could do or be anything and um, you know I was, I was sort of working here and there and <clears throat> I'd worked for, for Gladwins before I worked for Volvo and uh, the guy who owned Gladwins had sold it and that had really stressed me out because the kids were really young and we were in that sort of financial yeah, position yeah. and then I had to go and find something else so I just realised that actually there's so much risk involved in everything why why not actually just give it a go and it always been an itch it always been something that i felt that i could do do or give more so um that was a big big why i've sort of taken a lot of time answering that but um you know now what i realize having done having done some work on it and that i'm i am very much driven because flagship could have stopped growing um probably last year and we could have probably just settled in and, and what have you but we haven't we've chosen to grow we've chosen to reinvest we've chosen to sacrifice profit to, to grow and that's because i believe in what we're building i believe that we're making a dent in the world i believe that we can do good work around improving the safety of roads yeah, yeah. i believe that we are a great employer for people mm. i believe that there's some amazing people in the industry who deserve to work in better workplaces and we have the capability to be able to facilitate that yeah um and um i love working with with amazing people and when i get to choose the people that i work with um that's amazing, right? Ticks a lot of boxes, that does, doesn't yeah, it? It really yeah. does. You know, I can resonate with, resonate with that story. And, and, you know, it's not always... People always think it's about money, don't they? And it's not, is it? It definitely isn't about no. money. Money, as you know, as we know, when you go to pay for your groceries at the checkout, you need to, you need to produce... You need to be, in, in the case of Aldi, not a credit card. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think they do the take goods. them now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, it's it, at the end of the day, there's, if, if there's something there that's, that's, that's driving you on and you want to create... And you want to be different. I think you'll never probably be satisfied with a uh, as wonderful as, a, as an employer somebody like Volvo would be. Um, you're never going to be satisfied in that arena. So, um, and, and that's the issue. You know, I, I sort of looked at it and I looked at like the promotional opportunities and stuff. And I could I could have stayed with Volvo and I could have I could have got myself a nice blue suit and brown point issues yeah, and, and, <laughs> and um, you know worn a tie and, uh, and and conformed and followed yeah. the politics and the bullshit and probably I, something you a lot of people in your position will will ask themselves regularly why 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 fucking um, bother why bother yeah. uh, you know i know a lot of people in business that will you know lots of people set up business to make money and i think if that is your only motivation then you know fair play you probably will make some money and and uh, you know some people are very successful at it of course but uh, other people start start businesses up and uh, their aim is to is to create a living you know just a, a, a nice living um but i think I think that missing element, that element where there's a, a desire to make a difference, I think that's really, really important. And, um, uh, you know, hopefully that uh, we're, we're on a journey now where we're going to where we'll be achieving that. So absolutely. Uh, number two, then your your personal development as uh, you as a, as, a, as a person, then I'm guessing you're talking about how you would develop um, through the business, um, even yeah. though it's your business, as it were. Yeah, absolutely. So um personal development wow right so i'm a big i'm a big personal development person <laughs> yeah. i don't really know how else to say that um yeah based on um based on what what i've invested in the last year in myself i could definitely be driving around in a range rover but i've chosen not to <laughs> because the right thing to do is to invest in myself because that's that's the absolute right you'll thing. never invest in anything better than yourself no, you? absolutely truth, so yeah. and i think i think that's sort of really important to for people to understand that but not only that, but I invest in the people around me as well. Um, it's really important that everyone everyone gets the opportunity to develop themselves. The first thing I put about there is about your responsibility. So one of the things I realised really early on uh, is that no, there's no one coming to save you. 
you know, if you're hoping that someone's going to come and save you or or take control or sort your life out for you, it's not going to happen. No. Um, so you've got to take responsibility for yourself. Now, one of the things over time as, as the business has developed, I've realised that every, every fault, everything that goes wrong, everything that isn't quite how I want it to be is a product of me because it's been built in my vision. It's been built based on uh, the principles that I have. So I know that it is only ever going to achieve what I'm capable of it achieving. So the more that I invest in myself and develop myself, the, 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 the better that that can be. And I think a lot of people can become, when you get to a certain point, you can start to become a bit arrogant and that kind of thing. And actually, I enjoy, I, I realise that it's um, Jordan Peterson, quoting Jordan mm. Peterson here, but we're built, to, we're, built, we're built to climb uphill. Mm. And I'm certainly built to climb uphill. I love the challenge. I, mm. love, I love stretching. I love improving. Um, and, um, you know, I think taking ultimate responsibility, when you look at something that goes wrong and realising that it's probably because you'd not set the expectations properly or you'd not had the right conversation at the right time, you'd missed something. Um, and... Uh, I think I think I think that's a, a, a really important thing, and then just realizing that people people do the things. So one of the things that I realized when I started the business out was I was really really good and really enjoyed doing certain things. And what you, what happens is you end up really over developing the stuff you're great at and the yeah. stuff you enjoy doing, and actually you ignore the stuff. And this is why I think a lot of businesses will fail, um, and that's because the business owners don't like to do stuff; they'll ignore it uh, or they underdevelop that area of their business. And actually, what you do need to do is to make sure that you you, you develop yourself as a as a whole, and and that there's, there's there's you know there's stuff in life that you don't want to bloody do, yeah. but you've got to, yeah, you know, and, and and you've got to take that responsibility because no one else is going to do it for you. I was conscious then that I needed to, yeah, I didn't want to cross over into one of the other areas, um, but yeah, I think um, I think investing in yourself. Uh, if you're, you know, I read these memes on Facebook around like people going. You know they're happy to spend a thousand pound on a holiday, but not on a, on, the, on, on a course for themselves. Yeah, you know, so yeah. um, I, I, you know I think uh, yeah, like I well, said, it, development's yeah. really important. Training, and we, we we're always going to beat the drum for training here because that's what we do. You know, that's a, as a business, that's what we do. But how many times we look at it sometimes and think how much people spend on kit, how much people spend on advertising and marketing, but they come to training budgets and it's all oh that's a bit expensive or that mm -hmm. you know, but. What, yeah, what what could be a better spend than spending it on somebody rather than something? You know, it's yeah, absolutely. Always absolutely. my opinion. So, uh, absolutely, your your de your development then as as a person, as a leader. Um, that's, yes, as I see, you, you, your next one is becoming the leader. Yeah, then, so, so I thought I thought these tied in quite nicely because, about becoming a leader, and I think I'm 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 at this point now where. You know when you kind of don't really see yourself as a leader? Mm. I kind of don't see myself as a leader, but I realise that I've got to become a leader. And um, when you realise that you've taken responsibility, you've developed yourself, the next thing is you, you sort of start to show you about becoming a leader. And, and the thing... And one of the things I try and do is I try and think of all the incompetent bosses that I've had previously and try and do the absolute opposite. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, Hi, it's Pete from Flagship Partners. We're really proud to sponsor a Half Dozen Things podcast. At Flagship Partners, we take road safety really seriously and we're your road safety partnership. We help transport companies with compliance and training across their businesses, including first aid, driver CPC and other transport management services. So if your four is accredited or you want to improve your operator compliance risk score, give Flagship Partners a call today. Yeah. <laughs> um, but one of, the, one of the things that's, I kind of contradict myself from before when I say about personal development because it's really important that we are well rounded as leader that we we invest in ourselves but also love hearing the noises going off around there it's amazing um, authentic that's authentic, what we like to yeah, keep we the like podcast we like the yeah. podcast to be authentic um, so letting the specialists do their thing right so one of the things that I I see people get wrong uh, and and as a leader is Essentially, as a leader, you don't need to be the smartest person. You need yeah. to be you need to be the person who is able to gel an amazing team of people around you. And as as a leader, that doesn't necessarily need to be your directly employed team. It could also be the team of specialists that you use. Mm. Um, and it's important to select the right people and to get the right people doing the right job. And one of the things I've really learned is you buy cheap, you buy twice. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. 
I kind of I kind of embody flagship in in the values in which we we sell our business because mm. we sell our business based on the principles of you buy cheap you buy twice pay the people who know the specialism that that needs dealing with because we are that person in our yeah, field yeah. it doesn't always come up and land on your lap does it you have to look no. for it and I think that's a skill and art isn't it trying to find the right people to support you absolutely and you know I, I I'm sort of I'm, I'm so proud that we're building a team of people who are better than me at what they do you know there, there's no way that I could do the things you do Mike and there's no way that I could do the things that Jamie does mm. because you know it, it's about bringing people in that that do do the things that you're not great at if that mm. makes sense yeah, no, so that makes perfect, I think yeah. a part of the personal development is sort of rounding back to that second point about personal development is you need as well as developing yourself you need to know who you are and who you're not yeah if that yeah, makes yeah, sense no, so yeah. knowing who you are and who you're not knowing what you like doing and what you don't like doing and then knowing what your weaknesses and your strengths are and um bringing building a team of people around you that that plug those gaps yeah. is, is essentially what a great leader is and, and actually you know reflecting on that when you said that i just kind of started reflecting on companies that i'd work for and it's not necessarily as you say about the employed people it's about the team a wider team um the people you employ to help you develop that you know you i'm just you know, solicitors accountants uh, training providers you know wh whoever it might be um and you know, just reflect on the companies that I've worked for. Yeah, there's some pretty good um, choices that have been made by, by by bosses, by leaders that have that have been contributing to that company's success. So you're absolutely right there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I wonder definitely. how many people when they when they hear that will reflect on that and they say, you know, it isn't just about the employees. It's about the it's about the wider team, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, absolutely. And I think um, like like you say, pe people will often shop, shop around on price, but it's often and and that is an opportunity. If my suppliers are listening, that is, this isn't an opportunity <laughs> for you to yeah, increase your prices because yeah. <laughs> you know I love an arm wrestle as much yeah. as the next person. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. it's a, it's a bit you know it, business is business isn't it and uh, at the end of the day you you can't uh, yeah we, we, we have to be sensible but it's, uh, it's it's it is about that wider team and that, that really does resonate with uh, with what you've said there so um, let the specialists do the thing bring the people in you need to bring in uh, to help with the business then so what about uh, what about the, the next one I've got on my list there? The, the, and this is quite often. Sometimes this is a bit. People believe sometimes this is a bit cliched. I don't happen to believe that because I've, again, I've worked with some some companies with some great sort of value sets of values and principles. So tell us a little bit about Pete's uh, principles and values then. Yeah, and I think I think this ties in really nicely with the first area, which is which is the why. So I spent a lot of time talking about the things that I was moving away from um, before uh, and and sort of wanting to move away from the feelings of worthlessness and, and towards mm. feelings of value. And uh, values and principles are essentially a part of that vision. So I was brought up, I was brought up by, uh, by, by my, both my parents and um, my dad, he was a policeman of 30 years and he was a very principled man. Yeah. And um, I've always, you know, there's certain morals and codes that I've had drummed into me, you know, manners maketh the man mm. and, um, and, and various, various other ones treat people the way that you yeah, would like to be yeah. treated and, and all of that. Now I realize that actually it's a step further than treating other people the way you want to be treated because actually I want my want to be tra treated mm. differently to how you want to be treated. Yeah. So actually, you should treat people the way they, they want to be treated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, however, you know the, the the morals still stand and the, the the morals are still there. From a so from a principles point of view, I think I think it's really vital. If you're going to build a successful business, you need to understand what you stand for and what you don't stand mm. for. And as a leader in that business, I think you can be very vocal about the things you stand against, and 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 also be very strong in the things you you stand for. And I hope. I hope in the way I communicate, certainly online, in the podcast, those kinds of things, that the, the values I stand for are really, really, uh, are really vital. Um, the sort of just a brief sort of going back back to the why, I didn't really, I didn't even really realise sort of what I wanted to do as I was growing up, and I think that's always a bit of a challenge. You don't know what you want to do, and then the, I started the business, and over time I've not really realised what, what we've had and, and what we were building, but I had a bit of a I had a bit of a moment a little while ago when I was sort of telling, telling a story, and um, 
thing, things sort of move on. Pe- people, some people will know that I was very, very poorly when I was sort of 17, 18, and I'm very lucky to be here. And I think um, there, there was a lot of investigation at the time into the job I was doing and the and the chemicals I was using and, and what impact mm. that had. So, and I've always been very, you know, I've had several really defining moments in, in my work around people being safe and, 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 and what have you and, and have really sort of changed the direction I'm in. There was an accident in the workshop that I worked in where one of the technicians got his fingers like essentially snapped in a uh, in in a spring the, the spring that he'd got his fingers oh. in in the in the ring oh, and uh, it it uh, full, got gone back into um, into the mountain and uh, really hurt him and and that was a defining moment for me it was it was a horrific incident yeah, yeah, yeah. um and certainly I, I realized something that I sort of blocked out from my subconscious which is part of the NLP stuff that I've been working on was I don't actually remember the car accident as a kid but um my parents were driving a Citroen 2 CV, which, as as far as I know, I'm a little bit old, uh, young now to, to sort of know what one of those <laughs> is, but I think it was a Tin car. Tin snail, was they it, called Was them, it yeah. a car made out of cardboard no, or something? Much, much, much of that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I certainly, my memories, my memories of Dad's cars, and I never really realised, but Dad always had, the family car was a Volvo. It was a Volvo oh, estate yes. that was just yeah. built. That's like, a policeman's car, if I've ever heard of one, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. but when, when I was very, very young, my parents had this accident with a Citro- in a Citroen, and 2CV and they were coming under the bridge at Godmanchester and there was a vehicle in the wrong side of the road and um, they had a head-on collision and um, uh, dad, dad, dad had had some injuries mum well I'll, I'll come to mum in a mo but my, I, I was in the middle and I had my brother and my my older brother and my older sister either side my, my older sister had her two front teeth knocked out they were sort of her adult okay. teeth which always yeah. uh, always affected her and my brother had um some some bad uh, some bad back injuries and then uh, my mum was um, uh, mum was like very heavily pregnant with my younger sister she was about eight and a half months so we we really expected that we were gonna you know they expected that they were gonna lose my sister okay. and that was all, all yeah. from a car accident and um, you know I'm so so passionate around mm. driver conduct road Absolutely. safety vehicle maintenance um, you know I I nearly that there's lots of defining moments which I realise now that I sit and this is the thing I sort of say to people when you think about your values and your principles you have to delve into your subconscious sometimes yeah. because you don't realise what's driving you but after I came out of hospital I'd nearly lost my life I was on what's called warfarin which was yeah. blood thinning uh, tablets a guy a guy who I knew from school was actually drink driving and he overtook a van and nearly hit me head on in a in a vehicle and we just we just missed each other um i was very lucky to to miss that and obviously i was heavily on warfarin so if there had been a severe accident and i bled there's very every it's opportunity been, yeah, that i wouldn't have clotted have, yeah. um and then um and then there was another situation i remember my dad and my dad was so principled there was a there was a guy who wanted to take my older sister out on a date one time and he turned <laughs> up in a car that didn't have an mot <laughs> oh dear <laughs> and he, he turned up in a car that didn't have an mot uh, or my, sorry he took my sister out and my sister my dad found out subsequently it that it didn't have, have an mot or it failed its MOT. Out, yeah. and um dad just literally hit the roof oh, but, about yeah. about the the consequences of what that could be so Road safety is something that uh, there, there's been stamps throughout mm. my life yeah, where, where that's been, been a really, really vital part yeah. of um, my bit. We just got interrupted. Jamie, come and say hello, mate. Don't worry about it. Jamie, come, yeah. We've just been interrupted by Jamie. <laughs> this I think is he's the disappeared authenticity. Now. There he is. Hello. Hello. Podcast. Sorry, guys. Yeah. I'm being interviewed for half a dozen things, mate. Oh, right. Bye bye. Yeah. Oh, grilling. Nixon he, Frost. He's absolutely, nothing on this, pal. Exactly he's absolutely right. grilling <laughs> me, mate. Put the keys to the other end. Right, uh, oh, they'll have gone. They'll probably That's be right. downstairs, I reckon. Right. Sorry, mate. Uh, Jamie's doing overtime today. That's uh, yes. Look at that. You see, this is it. You see, de- yeah, he is. dedication to the to the cause. Eh? Absolutely yeah. dedicated, yeah. and it's made me realise that I'm waffling it's, on. It's, right. So anyway, but like I say, sometimes stuck in your subconscious yeah. are these horrific things that have happened to you that you probably don't think about on a day to day basis, but they're literally they driving back, you. Don't they? Did Dad and, ever uh, talk about much about. about his police work and? In yeah. those days they didn't open up did they I know it's a problem today with police officers fire people they don't talk about the the things they see in terms of road safety but it must have been there in the background somewhere a- absolutely um, you know and, and I think I think you know we one of the things we offer from a driver CPC point of view and from, from other training as well is the mental health training that mm. we offer so um, 
again punctuated by my history, my my desire and drive to, for us to get involved with that. Um, dad, dad, uh, dad served during the miners' strike, so oh, he right, had to yeah. go and uh, deal with that. And I know that mm. was before I was born, but I know that he he had what what, what they call in uh, well, I've heard my mum refer to as a as a nervous breakdown or, mm, or, yeah. or what have you that was referred to. But wh- wh- whatever that was, I wasn't about to see it, and I, I you know obviously dad probably won't appreciate me mentioning it but um here i am talking about it and um you know i think i think he was heavily affected negatively is the right way of putting it i don't know that there's anything diagnosed or anything like that but um you know i think it he would have had a horrific time and i know i know that at one point he would have been very keen for the 30 years to have come up and for him to be able to sort of draw a line under what he'd, what, what he'd been yeah, through you know yeah. um and, and and sort of similarly um there's there's various sort of uh mental health situations that i've seen uh, in the background that that probably are for another podcast on another day that i've seen um that i've seen uh sort of first-hand experience yes. i suppose for for other people not yeah. not to mention obviously my own challenges having in my 20s obviously feelings of worthlessness that we were talking about before that was probably punctuated by a level of post-traumatic stress disorder yeah, yeah. Um, from when I'd been poorly a, and, and then yeah. survived from being being so unwell. Um, so, so yeah. Anyway, move on to the next one, mate. Move on to the <laughs> next one. So the, the, the next one on my list here is uh, the network. Yeah, so I think networking is vital to the success of any business. Um, uh, and a really, really interesting story that's happened very recently that, that I've, I've put in the notes about spin. So really, really random, but I think people should always remember one of one of um, Jordan Peterson. I love Jordan Peterson. I refer to him again. <laughs> you I, don't didn't, I didn't. Re- I didn't realise I was going to refer back to him again. But um, Jordan Peterson, one of his twelve rules for life is always, always expect the person you're speaking to to know more than you do. Yeah. And I, I think that's a very interesting thing, but. One of the things around uh, networking and, and, and speaking to people and, 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 and that kind of thing is, one, someone said to me recently, every person that you speak to has got an interesting conversation in them or there's oh, something yeah. interesting. Anyway, very, very strangely, the other day I was in a spin class at the gym and I was uh, sat next to Sally. I didn't know yeah. she was called, you know, I didn't know she was Sally. And before anyone says, oh, you were chatting a girl up in the gym, <laughs> Sally Sally is very lovely, but she's, you know, she's not, she's not of, um, uh, we're of different age categories and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. Anyway, so, but she was absolutely lovely. And um, I, re- I remember spinning next to her and I think she refers back to it on an odd occasion back when I was doing what's called the C9 challenge. So I was doing a bit of a fasting type thing earlier in the year and I think I'd been moaning that I was starving yeah. and that kind of thing so the standing joke was whenever she saw me in the gym and we'd not really had much of a chat before she would go oh um, have you eaten today are you grumpy and uh, <laughs> I'd t- say I was, I'd been eating anyway I, I was really frustrated as a small business um we're going through a lot of capex expenditure, and I needed to build a build a relationship with the bank. And we bank with Barclays, and um, unfortunately, we were of a size where there was no fucking interest in us so, whatsoever, no, no. <laughs> um, because we're not we're not big enough. And um, so we've kind of struggled with that. And the guidance I've been getting from uh, certainly my peers who who have got bigger businesses is build a relationship with with your bank, and you know you'll be able to have lending when you need it, and yeah. all of that sort of stuff, and, and 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 break that door down and let them know who who you are. Anyway, Barclays have had zero interest in dealing with us. So I was actually very close to moving who we banked with because there's certain other banks on the market who are looking to get into smaller businesses they, yeah. and build relationships yeah, see, and those kinds of things. It, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So I was kind of a bit frustrated and it had been punctuated over the last couple of weeks with us moving and us spending a lot of money on CapEx and that kind of thing. Anyway, um, I'm in the gym and I'm having just a bit of a random chit chat with Sally. Oh, how's things been today? Oh, you've been at work? And I was hmm. sort of uh, talk, talking a bit about work. I said, what do you do? And she was like, oh, I work for Barclay. <laughs> you never know, do you? You just never know. <laughs> and so this is a woman that I've been spinning with for uh, sort of three or four months or, well, six months or more, really. Just sort of on and off. Yeah. You never really yeah. know. Um, and. It, it just took her what do you do and all of a sudden that was it so she works for Barclays and I was like oh okay uh, don't work with uh, business banking do you or are you personal banking no I'm in business banking wow. oh right okay yeah. I'm in business banking okay you're a business manager she goes yeah I was like oh okay she goes uh, but I deal with the sort of smaller businesses and I was like oh, oh do yeah. you deal with small businesses <laughs> funny old thing yeah, yeah what, what sort of size is that and she goes well 
up until four hundred thousand pound turnover, uh, businesses they they just get the call center. She goes, yeah, and I was like, oh really? Yeah. You don't say? Um, and she goes, but after four hundred thousand pound, up until about three million, where yeah, they yeah. start to become a, a medium sized business. Yeah, yeah. I deal with those small businesses, wow. and I was like, oh really? I was like, how about a company that's about to deliver over that threshold in their yeah. in their end of year accounts? And uh, yeah, we just got cracking. Fantastic! So that that is a story that for is, people. That is that proper you, networking, isn't yeah. it? It really is, and it's you never know when that opportunity is going to come, do you? Yeah. And to be prepared for it, and uh, yeah, that's the message, I suppose, is to be prepared for those opportunities Absol- when they do come. A- a- absolutely. And I think I think sometimes um, you know people people are quick to judge others, people are quick to be negative to others, um, and and they're not not afraid to tell people what they think of them. And sometimes it's better just to keep your mouth shut. Um, because you don't know who people are, um, no. and and everyone, I, th- I you know I always have a fundamental belief. Yes, there are some dicks out there, but generally speaking, I think everyone does the best they can with what they got. With what they've got, yeah. And do you know what? Funny enough, on a, on a similar sort of, uh, I always, well, not always. I sometimes we as trainers we choose. Uh, icebreakers, you know, to get people talking. And one of the icebreakers I use is, come on then, who's the most famous person you've ever met? And I'll tell you what, some of the stuff you get back is just Amazing, yeah. unbelievable. That's a great yeah. icebreaker. Uh, it is. To the very, very last uh, of your half a dozen things, Pete, uh, be true to yourself and your relationships. Tell me a bit about that then. What's all that about? Yeah, I think... I think um this one, this one was a bit of a bit of a just sort of to tie things up at the end, really. And I think I put this in there because I realised that 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 Maggie Maggie often doesn't get the credit that she deserves for for who she is and 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 sort of what how she supports me to achieve for the business. And I think uh, I think she gets she gets a bit frustrated. And really, I feel very fortunate to to have a relationship with her, for example, where. She she's quite happy for to support me, um, and we have that that thing where, you know, she's she's happy to do the things that I struggle with mm. the, you know, and um, she looks after the children. She does an amazing job, and uh, I definitely I definitely couldn't I couldn't do or achieve what we've ch- achieved without her, and I think sometimes. Uh, social media the general media etc etc if flagship blows up in the future it will be because of the nature of business because of the Mm. nature of society um largely speaking i will get a lot of the credit Mm. um and i think that that irks me a little bit because she's at home she she has to put up with a guy that comes back and is literally so dedicated to, <laughs> to whatever he does um that i just i don't stop i don't turn don't off i don't no. i don't switch off and and you have to have this level of like relentless obsession around what you do and and the way you think and it it's so it's so challenging so to all be able encompassing to do that. isn't it yeah, 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 yeah. It, does. And, it takes takes over but um, and she has such patience yeah, with yeah. me in particular um and and a lot of relationships don't don't last the time and um you know or people people grow apart but she's so you know she's so driven by keeping things going from a family point of view and she's so you know she's not motivated by by money either it's not that for her and a lot of people will you know potentially there's there's people out there who have been wildly successful and people will brand uh the partner as a gold digger and and things like that as well and actually you know like she was worse off when we got together than what she was before we got together you know so um and and she's you know she's everything that we ever earn she's earned every penny of it as much as i've ever earned if that makes sense you know that absolutely sense doesn't it um so i think it's really really important i think it's really important to realize what what relationships you've got and uh what's out there you know that i've got another another example and it links into and, and it sort of follows the story with the networking where you know, I had a friend who I randomly got chatting to at a kid's birthday party. Uh, Mark, you know who you are, if you're listening. I don't think Mark would listen, to be fair. But I had a friend who, um, I, you know, I built a relationship with at a kid's birthday party of all yeah, places. Yeah. Uh, he runs a successful business. And uh, when I started to think about running flagship, 
I went to him with the idea and I just sort of talked it through. I looked for his advice, that kind of thing. And the next thing I know, I was really unconfident because we didn't have any savings. We didn't have um, any help or support or, or, or sort of anything like that, anything to fall back on. So uh, it was a very risky to leave a corporate job to yeah, be able yeah. to set the business up. And, um, you know, again, that conversation, that relationship, building, um, building relationships with people. You know, Mark turned around and said... Uh, you know, he offered he offered some some money that helped support us whilst we got started and took a share of the business in return and invested in us and believed in us. And then when we had the cash to be able to buy our shares back, we were able to just buy our shares back. You know, so um, it was a, an amazing thing to do to to, to, to help yeah. to help us along the way. And I think I think I think sort of what I wanted to to point out there is that to to be able to build a business it's about people so i need to have a great relationship with my wife i need to have great relationship with people around me and then finally it's about the relationship you have with your customers and your clients as well and um building building relationships with with your clients it's more it's just so vital to to ensure that you work with the people that you want to work with um your team members and um and you get people around you who who you can you can ultimately rely on to help support you because um, it's you know it's really important to make sure that you're true to yourself and make sure you're true to those around you. Absolutely, yeah. No, it's, it's a really interesting. So, what's it? What's that been like then, uh, Pete? As we come to the the end of your half of your own podcast, what what does it feel like to be on the receiving uh, yeah. end this time? I think I think I can be a little bit more empathetic with my guests from yeah, now on. Absolutely, um, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm sweating. I'm, yeah. I'm actually I'm actually sweating. Um, I think. I felt a bit of a pressure to do a good job. Yeah, um, oh, that's excellent. Because how you do anything is how you do everything. Absolutely. And um, I didn't want to come in here. Don't get me wrong, I love winging it as much as the next yeah. guy. Um, but I didn't want to come in here and, and sort of fuck it up, really. So, yeah, hopefully. Hopefully it's a, we, it's we, a good listen. We've had a couple people. of technical issues. You, you're not going to, f- listener, you're not going to notice that because uh, uh, we, we've got some great people. Good, 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 as you mentioned, great team, good people behind yeah, doing doing that sort of magic for us. So, um, But hopefully that's uh, it's been really interesting uh, chatting to you, Pete. And, you know, I th- hopefully a lot of people, not necessarily people who are in business, that people people who might want to start a business up but you know other pe- people as well will, will, will you know re- that a lot of that, that will resonate with them but um wonderful well thank you very much indeed for being my guest you can have your podcast back now because the listener's not <laughs> going to want to listen to me uh for, forever more so you can have your podcast back with pleasure please everybody uh, you know subscribe uh follow see the stuff we're doing on on li- I, I i'm as bought into this project as as, as not not obviously as guys to speak but it's his business but uh, you know uh from my point of view uh you know it's 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 a it's it's definitely going to be something something a little bit special and uh you know come and be a part of that and you know adding on to what pete said there it's nothing without you know the people that are around and supporting and and interacting with us so uh, you know j- j- jump on in and enjoy the ride it's going to be it's going to be fantastic but th- pete thank you very much indeed i'll hand this over back to you for next time i'm not <laughs> sure you've got on next but i'm sure we've got a, a stellar cast of guests lined up we really have a, you know it's really making some waves so um uh, you know watch out uh, all those other podcasters out there because we're coming for you brilliant thank, thank you. you very much pete thank, thank you Thank you very much, Mike, for having me. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, big, big shout out, and thank you to Mike for taking taking on uh, interviewing me. It can't. Uh, it's certainly not easy. Um, and uh, you know, I've uh, I've, I've uh, really enjoyed Go it. Go on, so. say you've enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you very much, mate. So, cheers, cheers, mate. Bye, bye, bye. I really hope you loved today's episode. And if you did, please make sure you subscribe and listen out for future episodes too. Please do share it across your social media channels. We hope to reach more and help more people. If you want to find out more about me, my name's Pete Rushmer. You'll find me across any social media channel and my business, Flagship Partners. And we're your partners in success across your business. Thank you. See you again soon.